Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about your accent and this is gonna be a longer video. It consists of several classes. We're gonna work on different aspects of your English language. The thing is, it doesn't really matter which accent you use when you're talking. I haven't really talked like that because I was always trying to, you know, sound like a British person, sound like an American person. I guess this is one of the reasons you're watching this channel because I'm so passionate about different accents. And I actually love it when I hear people with different accents because it adds to your personality. It adds to your overall brand and image. But the thing is, if the accent is too strong or you mispronounce certain words, it might be hard to understand you because as non-native speakers, we not only mispronounce words, speak with an accent, sometimes we mix up words sometimes it mix up the word order and we just can't explain ourselves and this happens to me every single day oh my god I was just writing to my CPA today and he was like Marina what do you mean because when it gets too technical things happen so with this video we'll try to eliminate one of the things that might confuse other people and that is when you mispronounce certain very important words i hope you stay till the end of this video i hope you take notes and please share this video with your friends who are learning english i just hope this would make their experience of learning a language a lot more exciting and stay here to the very end like this video and subscribe to this channel let's start hey guys welcome to lingua marina today we're going to talk about very popular english words that are commonly mispronounced now there are 1.8 billion people in the world speaking english and everyone is kind of adding something to the language and uh, starting to mispronounce words and then we hear somebody mispronounce a word and we do the same and today i'm going to talk about the words that are mispronounced so if you're interested in speaking english as a native speaker without any mistakes continue watching this video The first word is GIF, and I would say GIF, but actually the guy who invented this thing, uh, this is kind of looped image that has this animation, he originally said GIF, G-I-F. Steve is using his own invention uh, to accept his award. So the right way to pronounce this word is GIF, not GIF. Salmon is the right way to pronounce the name of the fish. By the way, I love this fish, especially in sushi, especially grilled. And in America, the right way to say salmon is salmon. Have salmon. Salmon, uh, yeah. But if you're in Great Britain, you can say salmon. Timber and salmon. Uh, with an L. But in America, you just omit L and say salmon. Prerogative. This is the right way to pronounce this word. But there is a song called My Prerogative. Britney Spears sings it, Bobby Brown sings it, and uh, people started saying prerogative because my prerogative, because of the song. It's the way that I want to live. It's my but actually the right way to pronounce this word is prerogative. This is my prerogative. The next two words are actually Italian, but people keep mispronouncing them. The first word is bruschetta, but I've heard a lot of people say bruschetta, which is not right. You can't say sh there because it's an Italian word and people say bruschetta. And the second word is espresso. And yes, you're tempted to say espresso because of express and stuff, but no, it is espresso. It is an Italian word, so please say it correctly. And by the way, guys, if there are some words from your language that came into English, and the people keep mispronouncing please comment down below which word it is and what's the right way to pronounce it my comment would be babushka I don't know why but a lot of uh, English speakers say it this way when originally the word is babushka this means the old lady and uh, maybe it's just natural for English native speakers to stress the second part of the word but it's originally babushka looking forward to reading your comments down below the next word is pizza and here you can pronounce it like pizza uh, with a stop, with kind of t, with air coming out of your mouth, pizza. Because some people say pizza, which is not right. You kind of have to stop in the middle of the word and say pizza. Pizza! 
The next word that is commonly mispronounced is Wednesday, and I hear a lot of people actually say Wednesday. And again, if we kind of follow the rules of how to read in English, Wednesday might sound logical, but unfortunately in English we don't really follow the logic for a lot of words, and uh, we say Wednesday. Another word that kind of falls out of logic is, for example, you know this Greenwich, the part of London where time starts. Uh, so it's actually written. Green veg, you would kind of read it in this way, but the right way to say it is Greenwich. The same with an English town called Reading, uh, which is actually spelled like reading, but you just say Reading. So there are some things you just need to learn and remember, but the more you practice, the better you're gonna be at this. The next word is genre. I know a lot of people say genre, which is, uh, again, kind of logical when you try to read the word, but because it's a foreign word, we say genre, genre. Outselling every genre. The next word is police. Now, there is a subtle difference, so watch me carefully. A lot of people say police, which is not right. It's police. Police. <laughs> kind of blowing a candle. Police. Police. Often. Now, here's the thing. You can say both often and often, but if you want to be really academic and follow the rules, T here should be silent, so it's often, not often. But if you say often, people are gonna understand you, and in a lot of countries, people just use often more frequently. But if I were you, I would just stick to often uh, with a silent T. Too often. The next word is stomach. A lot of people pronounce it as stomach, which is not right, it's stomach. Stomach. Try to pronounce it with me, stomach. So it's gonna sta with an A, sta, and then mick with an E, stomach. My stomach is full. This is the right way to pronounce this word. Meme, we know there are a lot of memes on the internet, people making fun of each other, and uh, yes, you're tempted to read this word as meme, <laughs> which is also funny, but no, it's meme with a long E, meme. The next word is niche, and I say niche, but really, it's better to say niche, and niche is more conservative, more academic, and this is the better way to pronounce a word that refers to a special role or place. Niche, instead of niche. A little niche. The next word is a word that I've mispronounced for a long time. It's sugar. Now, follow me here, watch my mouth. It's not sugar. Because sugar, yes, you're tempted to read like that because the second letter is U, but it's actually sugar. You kind of just make this um, fake smile with your mouth and say sugar. That's the right way to pronounce this word, sugar. Sugar? The next word, oh my God, that's the most confusing word for, I think everyone really. I've heard a lot of Americans saying cocoa, when in reality it is cocoa. A in the end, we just don't read it. Coco, can I get some cocoa in my coffee, please? Can I get a cocoa flavored yogurt, please? You know, a lot of different examples. Coco. Can I have some cocoa later? Raspberry is another example of a word that has a silent letter. So P in raspberry is actually silent, so you can't say raspberry. You should say raspberry, raspberry. There is no P, it just goes away. The right way to pronounce bowl is bowl, not bowl. Some people say, can I have a bowl of rice? Uh, or can I have a bowl of soup? It's bowl of soup, bowl of rice. Bowl of milk. The next word is also really controversial and uh, you know, I'm used to saying status all the time, but if you want to be kind of really, really conservative, the actual pronunciation is status. And again, you can continue saying status, but if it's the time when you decide how to pronounce the word status, it's kind of more academic. Oh, by the way, one of the videos in this class I made back in 2018 and it got over 7 million views. Now, what's important to understand is that my accent has been also changing since then. And let me know in the comments below if you actually notice this change. Now, we're gonna transition straight to that video. You heard me speaking now. Now, let's hear the 2018 version of Marina speak English. And let me know in comments below if you notice the difference. Hey guys, welcome to the United States of America, the country of brands. And there are so many brands here that are international, so I want you to learn how to pronounce them in the right way so you can sound more American and more natural. If you're interested, please continue watching this vlog.
Okay, what is your favorite American restaurant? It's not McDonald's or McDonald's, it's McDonald's. It's very funny, so McDonald's. And that's the restaurant. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, but good thing we can just go in and ask. Let's do it. How do you pronounce the name of the store correctly um, in English? Well, you say moleskin. Moleskin? Um, but it just depends on where you're from. Well, okay, if it's, it's the American Italian. version, so, oh, okay. it's an Italian brand. So. But we were originally from? So it just depends on the region that you're from. And okay, but in America, it would be moleskin. Moleskin? Moleskin. Remember, moleskin. This is one of the most famous networks in the United States. So when you come to the States and you and you need to get a SIM card, you would go to either AT&T or T-Mobile. So remember, it's in American, it's T-Mobile because Americans don't say mobile, they say mobile. So the company's name in American is pronounced T-Mobile. T-Mobile was a rapper. My favorite car in the world is called Mercedes. Remember, Mercedes. It's my Mercedes. It is a car called Chevrolet. And surprisingly, it's an American company, but it uses a French name. And sometimes Americans just call it Chevy. I have a Chevy, Chevrolet. Pie in Chevrolet. Right behind me is another French shop that already came to the United States. And again, if you want to be correct, you want to read it in a French manner. So it's Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent. One of my favorite brands just behind me and the right way to pronounce it is again in French because it's from France so the correct way to say this word is Chanel and by the way I have earrings from Chanel and they're like the best I've been wearing them for two years and I think they're the best earrings in the world so I'm a fan Chanel I'm a fan Chanel 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 I am not really sure about this one. I think it's Lacoste, but just to make sure, let's go in and ask how to pronounce this brand name. Can you tell me what's the right name to pronounce the name of the shop? Oh, Lacoste. Lacoste. So no E in the end. No. Lacoste. Remember? Lacoste. Or if you want to say it with like a little bit of a French accent, Lacoste. Lacoste is French, right? Yeah. Okay. Lacoste if you want to be more French. We are in front of one of my favorite shops and my backpack is from there. So, the right way to pronounce the name of the shop is Louis Vuitton. Again, everything is French, come on. So, everything needs to be pronounced in a French way if you want to sound proper in English as well. So, Louis Vuitton. If you're a fan of shops like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Chanel, they are all from Europe and it's not the best idea to buy things from them in the United States because you don't get a tax free and tax free is like 9% off when you travel to Europe if you're not from Europe of course and in the United States you get an additional tax so if you want to buy a Louis Vuitton bag I would advise you to go to France and get a tax free when you travel out of the European Union Nike shoes. The correct way to pronounce this brand name is Nike, but that's very American. If you travel abroad, people would say Nike, but the right way is Nike because because it's just the way it's pronounced. So, Nike. Now we're gonna learn two words. Word number one is one of the most famous American cars, it's called Lincoln. Again, pay attention to what I'm saying here, it's not Lincoln, the way it's written, there is an L before N. When you actually pronounce it, you say Lincoln. 
The second thing about this car, it's also an Uber. You know what Uber is, right? And Uber is originally a German word, but Americans use it in the sense of better. So it's not Uber. It, again, you do not follow American pronunciation rules here. You just say Uber. So Lincoln, Uber. Uber, I need an Uber. I am standing in front of a very expensive shop. Again, it's French and I would suppose you pronounce it Hermé, but we're gonna try and ask them. I know it's prohibited to film inside those shops, but let's see what they tell us. If you could tell me how to pronounce your brand name. Uh, it's Hermès. Hermès. Yes. So you actually pronounce the last. It's a French uh, brand, so you don't pronounce the H. It's Hermès. Okay. Yeah. Hermès. So the correct way to pronounce it, I was wrong. You actually pronounce the last S. It's Hermès. Hermès. I was a little confused about this one. I pronounced it in a little American way with all the R's. Two degrees, a husband and a Burberry coat. Another brand name, really famous, and it's the competitor of Nike, and it's called Adidas. You probably called it Adidas or something else, but the correct way to pronounce it in American is Adidas. Adidas. We found $20 in a pair of Adidas. just passed by and the car is called Porsche and that's the right way to pronounce it because it's a German name the stress goes yeah. to the first part of the word and we say Porsche remember never say know, Porsche like never voice. never yeah. and don't say latte <laughs> this is like the worst thing I've ever heard it's latte latte is Italian word so if you drink coffee it's latte not latte Some people say Porsche. Great example of a name of a car that a lot of people are pronouncing wrong is BMW. This is a German car and in Germany you would say BMW. But if you're in America and you want to sound American, it's BMW and no other options. BMW. I have a task for you. Please comment down below with the most famous brand that came from your country and became famous internationally and let us know how to pronounce it right. So comment below which country you're from, what is the most famous brand and how you pronounce it. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Now I know this all might be like, wow, there are so many nuances. The thing is, guys, relax. First of all, relax. If you like English, if you enjoy learning, like the thing is, if you enjoy, you're gonna get there. It doesn't really matter how complicated it sounds to you now. It's all about having fun in the process. And then there are also some technical things. Like sometimes you hear something and then I explain it and somebody else explains this to you and you're like, oh wow, exactly. And people call it the aha moment. So if you had several aha moments while watching this video, I highly encourage you to take a class by my teacher Vanya and he's been teaching me pronunciation since we met back in 2017 and he's been correcting me, explaining things to me. Has a whole course on where to put your tongue, how to articulate, how to pronounce words. The link will be down in the description box below, you'll get a promo code and the new cohorts of these courses start every month or so. So whenever you're watching this video, there would be a new batch approaching in several weeks or maybe in several days. So please check the link down below and see what we have to offer. So is it cash or cachet? Is it jewelry or jewelry? Is it coupon or coupon? Is it focus or focus? Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna talk about words that even native speakers are mispronouncing sometimes because they are so weird. Like English is this weird language where you see a word with a lot of letters and it's actually read in a completely different way. In this video, we're gonna talk about words that are pronounced in different ways by different people so that you know how you will pronounce them. You will choose the right pronunciation, you will remember it, and this is what you're gonna stick to. You know, there are so many accents and dialects in the world of English. I think the best strategy here is to understand everything, but also make sure that you choose the right one for you. Like I chose, well, I chose American English California version because I live here. But when I was back in my home country in Russia, 
I decided that I would speak British English and this is what I was sticking to it. And then I changed it. It's okay to change later, but I think it's really important to stick to one version when you're learning. Okay, let's get into details. Let's look at those words. Realtor. Some people pronounce it as a realtor. I talked to a realtor. And I know in some languages it's actually realtor would be the right pronunciation, but in American English it's realtor. And she's a realtor. A realtor is a person who helps you buy or sell a house. Realtor. Okay, salmon is my favorite word ever. Yes, a lot of people pronounce it as salmon. Salmon bread served with salmon butter. Salmon with an L but it's basically British. So if you come to Great Britain, it's salmon. In America, it's salmon. Salmon. I want some salmon on my avocado toast. Very California. Salmon, American, salmon, British. Garbage. Some people say garbage. Garbage disposal? But it's actually garbage. Garbage, absolute garbage. Just exaggerating it. Garbage is wrong, garbage is right, garbage. But I know where this mispronunciation is coming from because it's written B-A-G-E, beige, right? But it's actually garbage. Garbage is a synonym of trash, cash. Okay, that like the spelling here, I would read it cache, cache, or whatever, because there is an E at the end, but it's actually cash, just cash. When your computer is super slow, they tell you to clean your cache cache memory. So it just deletes all the temporary files from your computer and it's supposed to start working faster. Cache. Cache was cleared and the cookies have been reset. A cache is a hidden store of things. Please remember, making mistakes in English is okay. Even native speakers make mistakes all the time. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you should copy them. If you have hard times when people don't understand you when you first say something, or you're just afraid to speak English because you're afraid that your pronunciation is not correct, I have a special course for you, which is called Pronunciation 2022. It is created by my company LinguaTrip and it teaches you how to pronounce words in American English. The teacher is gonna teach you how to open your mouth, where to put your tongue. He's gonna talk about the whole culture of speaking American English. And he's the guy, Vinny is my friend. He taught me a lot of different tips and tricks about American pronunciation. So I highly, highly recommend you take this course. It lasts four weeks. You get 21 practical classes and you also get two live streams. It's a very practical course. You get homework after each class where you learn how to pronounce different words. You have cards, you have quizzes, you have a chat with Vinya where you can ask all the questions. If you're an active participant in this course and you do all the homework, you would also be able to win prizes from LinguaTrip, which are free courses and free one-to-one -one lessons. Choose master and guru packages to be able to win those prizes. Because you're watching this video, you get a special Price. The link will be down below. Check it out and start working on your pronunciation right away. <sighs> Mischievous. If you were to ask me how to read this word for the first time, like if I see this word for the first time in my life, of course I would read mischievous. Show me mischievous. Obviously. Like from the spelling, it's obvious. But no, hello, welcome to learning English. It's mischievous. I feel I must warn you though, they are rather mischievous. Mischievous means behaving in a slightly bad way. Another meaning is causing trouble. Kate looked at us with a mischievous grin. When she smiled that way, we realized that she was about to do something evil and unpleasant. Now again, this word, I would just read it jewelry. The jewelry man. And I understand why people say jewelry, because what? Why is it jewelry? So the right way is jewelry. Jewelry? Jewelry is this. What I'm wearing here is jewelry. Coupon. Sometimes I hear coupon. Sometimes I hear coupon. I was thinking that we could put a coupon in the back. But in American English, the right way to pronounce this word is coupon. Coupon. Honestly, a coupon? Clip this coupon for $10 for your next purchase. This coupon clipping used to be a very common activity in the US because a lot of people would receive magazines and we still receive magazines from the local grocery store, Safeway. And it has a lot of coupons, so you basically cut them out and you present them at checkout. Now everything is digital. You can just download an app and have all the coupons at your fingerprints. Okay, this one is tricky. Let's just learn how to pronounce it right away. I'm not gonna give you any uh, wrong ways to pronounce it because it is not a very common word and I want you to remember the right uh, way right away. 
hyperbole. So it's almost like an adverb, hyperbole, uh, but it's a noun. Oh, hyperbole isn't the worst crime. Hyperbole means that you're exa exaggerating. Oh my God, this is the best video I've ever seen on YouTube. You can tell me that. But I know it's gonna be hyperbole because I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of other amazing videos on this platform, but I like that you're using a hyperbole to, um, you know, make me feel better. Thank you. Foliage. This word is pronounced as foliage. Foliage. And the fall foliage is amazing. Some people pronounce it as foliage. Um, again, because the spelling is tricky. Foliage is leaves on the trees. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. So funny, I can't remember. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Worcestershire, it actually makes it easier when I actually look at the word. Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if you've seen this TikTok recently, but there is this trend uh, going on. Three of the hardest things for people to say. I was wrong, I need help, Worcestershire sauce. Three of the hardest things for people to say. I was wrong, I need help, and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire. Worcestershire would be the right way to pronounce this word. It's actually a very common sauce. A lot of people use it to make meat. A lot of people use it like, most of my friends would have it in their fridge just because they use it to cook from time to time. A great recipe from our CTO, from the CTO of Lingua Trip, he used the sauce to create omelette with cheese and add some Worcestershire sauce on top and it tastes amazing. This word, not a swage, not osage, a swage. A swage means to make unpleasant feelings less strong. An example would be, nothing can assuage my pain. Perhaps you could assuage your guilt through altruism. The next part of this video is gonna be slightly different. We're actually gonna watch a video by me and one of my favorite vloggers out there, Lucy, who teaches British English. And this is for you to train your ear. Now, I wanna be honest with you. I couldn't tell the difference between British and American accent until I was like upper intermediate slash advanced. Everything sounded exactly the same to me. And when people complained that somebody had an accent, I was like, well, they might have an accent, doesn't make any difference. I don't understand them and that's okay. Again, this is what happens what, if you watch this video and you can clearly hear the difference. Congratulations, your ear is getting there. When I realized that I could tell the difference between American and British accent, for me that day was the start of new life. I was like, okay, finally I'm getting there. Oh my God, what's going on? Amazing. And you're learning me that the American. So funny. Rude, very rude. <laughs> hey Marina, why do you say sidewalk instead of pavement? Well, this is quite obvious. You actually walk on the side of the road. Okay, but what about fall? Autumn is such a pretty word, I have no idea why you decided to change it. This is easy. Leaves are falling down. This is why it's fall. Okay, that makes sense, but why would you eliminate the word Q? It's one of my favorite words. It has five letters, but we only pronounce one. Q. Well, this also makes a lot of sense. People actually stand one by one and they form a line. So I think the right way to call it is line. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. I have an amazing guest today. We're making this video together with Lucy and Lucy is from Great Britain. So we're gonna talk about differences between British and American English. I'm not an American, but I've lived here for over six years and I've put some effort into actually learning the American way. So today we're gonna compare two versions and uh, you know, you don't have to speak any of those, but I think as an English language learner, you need to be able to understand people from all over the world. And this video is hopefully going to help you uh, tell the difference between the two versions of English. Let's jump on a call with Lucy and discuss those differences. Hi Lucy! Let's talk about the R sound. Like in the US, we actually pronounce it. Like, can you say I'm bored? I'm bored bored <laughs> yeah see like you you don't pronounce it C can you say morning morning <laughs> yeah see like morning and then can you say water oh this is your favorite americans always ask me to pronounce this is my favorite yeah. <laughs> water water although you will hear some brits saying 
water bottle of water. <laughs> water when i was in great britain i i was like i'm fascinated by british accent i want to mimic everyone uh but yeah this is like what i do i come to different countries and try to try to mimic people but yeah basically in american english we pronounce the r in in british english you try to you try to avoid it you're like morning what water but can you say report 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 so we do use it at the beginning of words uh, but in the middle of words, sometimes yeah. we avoid using it. So yeah, and, and I think water is, is the word that you can actually use to like check <laughs> who comes from where. Because in American, not only we say are in the end, water, we also like, I say we. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, but anyways, uh, when we say water, we like, we don't even say T, we say are, like water, water. It's just interesting to see what native speakers do. Uh, with their mouth. Guys, before we continue, I have something exciting for you. Lucy and I have put together a mini course which lasts two weeks that allows you to boost your vocabulary with new words and phrases in both British and American English. So basically the way it's gonna work is that during the course every day you will get four phrases with explanations from me, four phrases with explanations from Lucy, and you would also get regular tests with phrases that you've learned before so you constantly go over them and train your brain to remember those phrases. At the end of the course you're gonna pass a big test where we're gonna show you which phrases you remembered and which phrases you would need to pay extra attention to. So basically, this is your chance to study with me and Lucy, to learn both versions of English, British and American. And this is a course for intermediate learners to help you get onto the next level to make your English more advanced and to make your vocabulary more diverse. And it doesn't matter which version of English you decide to speak British or American, or maybe your own version of English. But I think it's really important to be able to understand everybody who speaks English. So join our course, the link will be down below. We decided that we're gonna give a special price for the first 150 students who join the course. So make sure you're one of the first to enroll. The link is down below. See you soon on our course. Another thing I wanted to talk about, when we have a phrase, like for example, once and for all, would you pronounce the R? So that's really interesting, because if I pronounce for on its own, I don't pronounce the R. But if I say once and for all, I do pronounce the R. Do you know why that is? I don't think there are a lot of like rules in the language, but I also try to think, does it, does it make it easier to pronounce? If I add an R there, does it make yeah. it sound like a song? And I guess, I guess it is. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, there is a slight rule. This is called a linking R. So if a word ends and is spelt ending with an R um, and the next word begins with a vowel sound, then we will include that R. So if I say for me, no mm -hmm. R sound, but for us, I do include the R sound. Yeah, and I think it actually makes it easier to pronounce, right? For us. For yeah, us. definitely. What's it so like in American? Us. Yeah, same. Once and for all. It just, American American English is all about simplifying things. And if it sounds like a song, then it makes sense to pronounce it that way. This is, this is what I think. So you can link everything into one word so people can actually tell when the sentence is over. <laughs> so it's like a one, one thing. Let's try a couple more examples. Can you say, where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty similar. Uh, to get you a bar of chocolate. To get you a bar of chocolate. Yeah, so the following words begin with vowel sounds, so we are using the R sound there, the linking R. There is another interesting thing that British people do. Uh, can you say, I saw a good film? So I would say, I saw a good film, or I saw a good film, but sometimes you will hear, oh, actually I say sometimes, oftentimes you will hear people saying, I saw a good film. And we kind of insert an R where there isn't meant to be one. Sometimes instead of saying words like drawing, we say drawing, because it just feels natural to us. Interesting, is there a rule for that? We sometimes include it when a word ends in a vowel sound and then the following word begins in a vowel sound, but we don't always do it. And people do frown upon it, they don't like it. Um, I've said drawing sometimes in my videos and people have sent comments saying, there's no R there, don't pronounce it. And Bainbridge thinks his stalker is a bloke.
So there are two cases. If a word ends in a schwa sound and it's spelt with A, and then the following word begins with a vowel sound, R will often act as a connector. So for example, India is known for its diverse culture. India is for its. For ends in an R, so we are meant to have that there, but India ends in an A, so that R is intrusive. Interesting. India is known. India is known. Wow. I can totally like, uh, yeah, I totally get that. I've heard it before. I've never realized it's actually that way. How would you say it in American English with your accent? India is known. There is no R. Like, n I've never heard mm -hmm. Americans actually do it. India is known. Yeah. India is. Yeah, we do use the R quite a lot. Something about looking after a cinema actress. We do actually have another situation where we use it. It's when a word is written with an OR at the end and the next word begins with a vowel sound. So, I've been a law-abiding citizen my whole life. Law-abiding. Would you say that? Or you would just hear people say that? I've been a law-abiding citizen. I've been a law-abiding citizen. I think I might say it if I was speaking casually with my friends, but if I was speaking in a formal situation, I would probably avoid using it. Look, there appears to be a flaw in the bomb's operating system. Awesome, let's move to my favorite sound, T. Uh, well, the letter T in American English actually has four ways of pronunciation. You can pronounce it as T, as R, uh, there's also a glottal stop. Sometimes we also pronounce it as D. What about British? Oh, we have a great relationship with the T sound and we love glottal stops. So uh, we, pr we pronounce it in two ways. We either pronounce it as it should be with the T or we replace it with a glottal stop. For example, water or water. So it's very common to use the glottal stop at the end of words. I would say, but I don't want to but I don't want to. But it's less common to use it within two syllable words. For example, water is something I wouldn't say, but in certain areas of the UK with accents like Cockney, it's like a fundamental part of their accent. They would ask for a bottle of water. But for me, it'd be a bottle of water. Awesome. And then another thing that you do in Great Britain, so actually when I went to London, in London they call the underground the, the tube. So this is how I learned the word tube. Yeah. It, and I learned it way before YouTube came around. So when I came to the US, when everybody asked me what I was doing, I would say I make videos on YouTube. And they'd be like, what? And then like in America, we say YouTube. But it took me a couple of years of switching from YouTube, because I learned it the British way, to YouTube. And people laughed at me in, in the comment section uh, for saying that. So what's what's with the, with the ch sound uh, when the letter is T? Yeah, we add a Y sound, so it should be YouTube. But when we have the Y sound, uh, or like the T-Y-U sound, we often squish it together and make a ch sound, tube. So instead of saying tuna, we might say tuna. In fact, I know that I say tuna most of the time, uh, unless I'm trying really hard to speak really well. I want a tuna sandwich. <laughs> so for example, for me, I watch the news. What do you watch? The news. And I eat no, tuna? Tuna, like tuna, <laughs> tuna sandwich. <laughs> tuna. How interesting. And duty? Oh, it's this is where T becomes R, like duty, duty. Ah, uh, it's the flap T, duty, 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 yeah. duty for us. I think British is like cuter. <laughs> it's so weird because American English was so aspirational for us as children um, because we used to watch American movies, American mm. TV shows. And so when I was a child and I used to play pretend, I used to put on an American accent and it would drive my mum crazy. <laughs> because it was probably a really bad one. Interesting, because when I was staying with my British friends, so they're very educated, and um, they'd be like, oh, American English? They're always so loud. They're avoiding grammatical rules. And like when we were walking London and we saw Americans, my friends were like, oh, Americans. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn the British way. <laughs> that was so funny. Rude, so very funny. rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, I totally see why this could happen, like, also because Americans are very loud. But yeah, it was interesting. And when I learned the British accent, like, it took me several 
uh, months of staying in the UK, I could not understand American movies. It was really hard for me. Like I had to listen really, really carefully to actually understand the American way. I don't know if it's just me or any other language learner, but like, first of all, you like, when you hear the real English, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? It's not what I've learned at school. And then you get used to one accent and then you hear another accent, especially like British and American. And you're like, wow. Oh my God, I have to learn everything again. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to get used to one specific accent. I learned Spanish in the south of Spain and I got so used to it that I actually struggled a little bit understanding speakers of like a northern dialect. Mm. Yeah, that's why you've got to listen to as many accents as you possibly can to make you kind of a, a well-rounded English speaker and understander. <laughs> exactly. Let's say this, I'm gonna say this uh, the way I would say it. I met my mother on the tube. Well, I wouldn't say on the tube because we don't use the tube in, in the US, but anyways, on the tube, on the underground, on Tuesday. What about you? I met my mother on the tube on Tuesday. Tuesday. If I were talking to my friends, I'd say, I met my mother on the tube on Tuesday. <laughs> Can you say during? During. It's actually easier to during. say during. What do you say? I would actually say you can say both. I've heard both in America. People say during as well. Because it's just during, like here, you actually make an effort to say during. During is easier. So I think it's, it's just come, it just comes naturally. During and reduce. Re reduce, mm -hmm. reduce. Yeah, reduce, reduce. Okay. Americans also pronounce ch instead of t in such words as eventual, mutual, adventure, picture. So some people would say, not picture, picture. What about British? I'd say we match you on that. You will hear some incredibly well-spoken people saying eventual, mutual, adventure, but r pretty much we say adventure, picture, eventual, Mutual. Let's talk about the stress in words because it's also different for British and American English. Okay, advertisement. We actually say ad. I don't. I don't hear people say advertisement really. Do, do you say? What do you say in in Great Britain? We have two variations. We can say advertisement or advertisement. Advertisement. And honestly, because we consume so much American media, it's really hard to know which words are like the gen have the genuine British pronunciation and which ones are just kind of Americanisms that we've adopted. I would also say ad. Okay, let's talk about donate. I'm going to donate, donate. Yeah, oh, I never even realized that was different. How do you say it? Donate. Okay. It's very clear the stress is on okay. the first. I think in British like both, right? Yeah, I would say donate. I'm going to donate my clothes to a charity shop. What about rotate? Rotate as well, the stress is on the second syllable. Literature. Literature, literature. Vitamin. Vitamin. Progress. Oh, so you pronounce it in the British way. Americans should okay. say progress. Yeah, I, should progress. <laughs> I still have that. Progress. 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 Yeah. <laughs> You're learning me that in the American. Progress. Progress. I'm making progress, right? Simultaneous. Simultaneous. Mm, interesting. Wow, I think that was awesome. Thank you so much, Lucy. And wow, it's, it's just for me, it's so fascinating how different the same language can be. And um, setting those differences is, is just a lot of fun. And thank you guys for watching this video up to the very end. Please subscribe to Lucy's channel, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And uh, no matter what accent you have, no matter which version of English you prefer, I think it's great to be able to understand anyone who speaks English. So thank you for learning this with us. 15 words that are commonly mispronounced. Maybe you are pronouncing some words in a wrong way. Let's do a quick test. I show you a word and you pronounce it. Asthma. Pseudonym. Yacht. Sword. Lettuce. Thing is, in English there are so-called silent letters that you actually see and you're tempted to read them when you pronounce the word, but uh-uh-uh, you don't do it. Let's talk about those words in this video. Cupboard. The P is silent, so it's not cupboard, it's cupboard. 
Cupboard is a piece of furniture with doors and shelves. Cupboard. Hey, where is the grater? It's in the cupboard. No space to think in that broom cupboard. The next word, subtle. It is written with a B, so make sure that when you're writing, you actually spell it in the right way, but the way you pronounce it is subtle. Subtle means not loud, not obvious, subtle. For example, I think we need a more subtle approach. There's a B in subtle? By the way, the letter B is also not pronounced when it follows a letter M at the end of the word. Let me show you some examples. Climb, climb. There is no B in the end when we pronounce it. Calm, calm. Something you use for here, calm. We don't pronounce B. B is also not pronounced in words like debt, plumber, and many more. How do you know it? You learn it. The next word is mortgage. Mortgage is a type of loan that you get to buy a house. It has a letter T, which is silent and is not pronounced. Mortgage. They took out a 15-year mortgage, which means that they have 15 years to repay the debt. Debt. <laughs> not debt. Debt. I mortgaged my house. I'm in $200,000 of debt more. Oh my God, this is my favorite. <laughs> Colonel, seriously, Colonel? Why? I don't know, Colonel. Basically, if you Google Reddit, it says that it's just because this word was borrowed from French. So the way it is written has nothing to do with the way it's pronounced. Colonel. Colonel Glenn launches in a few weeks. Debris, debris. Silent S. Debris refers to everything that is left after an accident. I don't know, when the airplane crashes, we have debris. When explosion happens, what is left after this is called debris. Again, this word comes from French. And that will be a very good explanation why the S in the end is not pronounced. Unfortunately, during the evacuation, astronaut Mark Watney was struck by debris and killed. I think it's also important to just keep in mind that English and, you know, the na America, the nation who speaks English, people came here from all over the world. So everybody brought their own piece of culture, their own words, and they assimilated with the language. So sometimes you're like, I really want one single rule that I can follow when I'm reading and pronouncing English words. Unfortunately, there are some rules, but there are a lot of exclusions from those rules as well. The word sandwich. If you actually look at the dictionary, you would see that there is D in pronunciation of this word, but most of the time I hear it, people say sandwich without the D. And in British, they just say sandwich, sandwich, sam I, I forgot how to mimic, how to try and mimic British accent. But anyways, the letter D is silent there. When I think about this, how do I explain this to myself? People try to make things easier for themselves and saying send the which is just three uh, consonant letters one by one and like three consonant sounds this is too hard send which is too hard sandwich allows you to sing while speaking right when you can sing and swing when you're talking when you're speaking english just makes things easier and smoother and this is why people choose to pronounce words in an easier manner so it's easier to speak just a tomato sandwich the next word is column. This is where you don't pronounce the N at the end of this word, column. I didn't have the time to read the whole article. I just read the first column. Actually, there is a certain rule that you can memorize. When N comes after M at the end of the word, you don't pronounce the N. Some examples to make this clear. Autumn, dam. So it actually ends with an N, but you don't pronounce it. It's my entire column. The next word is sword. Sword is a weapon. A weapon which is written with a W, but you don't pronounce this W. Sword. Being famous is often a double-edged sword. This is a saying that means there are good things about being famous and bad things about being famous. You told me that the Vorpal sword is hidden in the castle. Help me find it. By the way, all of this is taught in a course called Speak Like an American. This is a pronunciation course where you will learn 
where exactly your tongue goes when you pronounce things, where you would learn how exactly your mouth should open and close if you want to sound more like a native speaker. So if you're willing to get rid of your accent or just to pronounce words in the right way because pronunciation actually affects the meaning and sometimes when you fix a couple of small things it becomes a lot easier to understand you. The link will be down below. There will be a special promo code to join this course. Start speaking like a native or at least just fix your pronunciation and speak in the right way. The link is down below. See you on the course. When I first came to the US I didn't know the word lettuce and I said lettuce. Just because, well, this, because this sounds normal. Like this sounds the way I would read it, right? Lettuce. And people are like, oh, lettuce? Here you go. The same, same thing. The word that I've heard for the first time here in the US was cilantro because I learned uh, Italian. I was like, cilantro. <laughs> You're like, what? Cilantro? Are you serious? Cilantro. Okay, anyways, lettuce. This is the way you pronounce this word. Double guacamole? Of course. No cilantro? Nope. Lettuce shredded, not chopped? Yep. Vegetable. Two letters E here are silent. Listen to me carefully. So it's not vegetable, veg whatever. It's vegetable. So the second E is not pronounced and the last E is not pronounced. Vegetable. I got a vegetable garden. Two years ago, it was a patch of dirt in my backyard. Soften. Here we have a silent T. The same thing happens in a word castle and asthma. Here, by the way, in, in the asthma case, you might be confused because they have TH there and you're like, ath asthma? Asthma? No, asthma. So in this case, we have silent T and silent H, asthma. Don't try to soften me up. Pseudonym. Oh my God. Again, some foreign word that came into English. Pseudonym. Yes, not pseudonym. Pseudonym. The first P is silent. A pseudonym is a name that somebody uses instead of their real name. Lingua Marina is a pseudonym that I use on this channel. And my real name is Marina Mogilko. That is my pseudonym. P is also not pronounced when it comes as a first letter in words followed by a consonant, like psycho or psychology or pneumonia. There was never any parking by the psychology building. Another word that comes from French is a word coup, where you don't pronounce P in the end. Coup means an unexpectedly successful achievement. The meaning of this word is a sudden illegal attempt taken by the citizens to take control of the government. Coup. He'll think you organized a coup. Yacht. Not a yacht, but yacht. A yacht is a boat with a sail that is used for racing or traveling. And basically here you have two letters, CH, that are not pronounced. Yacht. How about we spend a weekend on a yacht? That sounds great. Tonight was a 10,000 per person fundraiser to pay for major renovations at the East Hampton Yacht Club. Last but not least, government. The government is planning to increase taxes. Government, government. Here we don't pronounce the N in the middle. Again, my explanation would be too many consonants. Government would be too much. Government? Sounds okay. This is the way you pronounce this word. She was a secretary for a government agency and I am too. Hey guys, welcome to Beverly Hills. Welcome to Lingua Marina. My friend Vania is joining me today. Yes, I am. And this class is all about pronunciation, but also about listening. Because you're used to listening to me when I'm in my studio. So it's very quiet. When it's a controlled environment, yeah. but a real conversation is never controlled or predictable. Exactly. So today we're gonna learn how to pronounce words that native speakers and non-native speakers use on almost daily basis. Let's start. And word number one, Vinya, how do you pronounce February? Uh, well, I would say February. February, so ignore that first R. It is a mouthful trying to say February. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. And if you really pay attention and listen, many people don't really say it like that. People just say February. So it's a buary, February. It's a lot faster and it's just easier. It's more effortless. And uh, American English is all about it being effortless. 
In February 1992, Nicole filed for divorce. If you remember, a couple months ago, I made a short video for this channel where I asked Benya how to pronounce the word fifth. Right. So he taught me to pronounce it like fifth. So you don't, fifth. you don't really pronounce the third F. But the thing is, it is okay to pronounce this word in different ways. I get so many comments from people saying, nobody says fifth, everybody says fifth. So in reality, Wait, what? a lot of people told me that. You people say fifth? Fifth, yeah. And so there were- Well, you're stupid. Fight me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Of course it's okay to say things in different ways, but in my humble opinion, saying fifth is very impractical. It's kind of strange. Fifth? Are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? Come on, come on. We don't have time like that. We don't, what kind of time are you on? No, 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 no. So, the easier way to pronounce fifth is fifth. Yeah, just skipping that uh, second F, the third letter. And honestly, after we did this video and after I got all the controversial comments, I started listening to people around me. How do they pronounce? And I would say 99% would say fifth. Yeah, without the F. Fifth. Fifth. It's just easier. Why would you put yourself through that? Trying to say fifth. Come on now. Think. I love you though. Mr. Clark, fifth grade. This is the fifth iteration. That's the fifth time she's called this morning. Who's the fifth ticket for? Seems imagined. Like secrets in fifth grade. Now, I don't think a lot of people can argue with me on this one uh, because it is kind of uh, universal in that sense. But uh, we have Monday, we have Tuesday, and then we have, you're right, Wednesday. So even though it's spelled like Wednesday, obviously that sounds weird and bizarre. So it is Wednesday. Like when, when you say when, oh, when are you coming here, right? So it's Wednes with a Z, day, Wednesday. It was Wednesday, I think. Yeah, Wednesday night. Of course, you guys know words like could, should, would, etc. When you say them in American English, Something that I've learned here, your lips should act as if they're numb. Like if you just went to the dentist and they prepared you for surgery, uh, so they numb your mouth. So it's like could, should, would. Because sometimes we're tempted to say would, should, could, which doesn't sound American. Could, should, would is more American. I would if I could. And of course, don't forget, there are many ways to pronounce different words and people will still understand you. Okay, so we have first, second, third, fourth. We established fifth in this video. The next one is very tricky. So the next one is sixth. Now, of course, you don't want to emphasize that too much, obviously, but it, it, it needs to be there still. So here's the trick. When you say six, the last sound of that is S, correct? And the TH, the voiceless TH sound that we use at the end of sixth is very similar. The only difference is your tongue is out just a little bit and you blow out air. So from S, you have to go into S. And the best way to do that is just stick your tongue out. That's it. S, S, S. Do this exercise a couple of times slowly. S, S, S. And then you're ready to say six, six. And then gradually you can speed it up. Six, 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 and then it'll be seamless. So there you go. Thank you. Remember that sixth grader who kept stealing your lunch? If you're enjoying this video and need more tips like these, Benia has the whole course on how to sound like an American where he goes into details about where you put your tongue, how you open your mouth, what is the technique of saying particular sounds in English. So if you're interested, there would be a promo code below this video. Please sign up and start taking the course right away. And let me tell you why it's important. Depending on your ear is not the most reliable thing because obviously it's something that you need to work on. Uh, not everyone's you know, ability to hear specific sounds is the same and not everyone's ability to hear those sounds is good. You know, so that's why I came up with something a little more reliable, which is if, you know, if the instructions are put your tongue behind your front top teeth, you can't really mess that up, you know, so it doesn't really matter how well 
you hear, it's all about just literally doing the movements that you need to do and the motions that you need to do. And, and it actually makes it easier to work on your pronunciation and get rid of your accent. A couple more words we wanted to talk about in this video are words clothes and months. So there are two ways to pronounce these words. One of the ways you can simplify everything and instead of saying clothes, you just say clothes. Just omitting the TH sound completely. Clothes, months, months. Like, you're just omitted. It's not that, months. Even seven months pregnant, Lainey couldn't keep her clothes on. But if you want to be a little more detailed with it, because even when you are seemingly just throw them away, and I'm talking about the THs, they are still present just a little bit. So obviously when you say clothes or months, you never want to focus on the THs too much and stretch them out too much. But what you do want to do is still keep them there just a little bit. Obviously it's just an option. You don't have to do that. So, you know, when you practice, obviously you want to exaggerate everything and say clothes, months, just like we did with sixth, same concept. But, you know, eventually you will find a way and it's very personal to everyone. That's why we love English because everyone has their own version and you really need to get to know yourself through English and that's what we love about it. So once you get a little more experience under your belt, you'll be able to say clothes, clothes or months without stretching it too much to the point where it would sound pretty much just like clothes and months, but it's very faint, it's very weak, but it's there. Clothes, months. Clothes. 13 months to the day since Gandalf sent us on our long journey. 19 versus 90. And sometimes when you pronounce them in a wrong way, people just don't get the right number. So... It's actually very common uh, with native speakers too. I often hear it when uh, people try to say, you know, 16 versus 60 or something like that. People have to double check and ask, six zero or one six? So it's very common. If uh, it happens to you, don't feel bad because it's very normal. But the way you can avoid it is just place extra emphasis on the teen part of 16, 15, 14. It will be very different from 40 versus 14, right? 30 versus 13. You just put a little more emphasis and a little more stress on the teen part and uh, that way you can play it safe. They put me in prison in 1992 to 93 maybe. That was it from us for today. Vanny is driving me to the airport. I'm flying back home to San Francisco. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Thank you so much, Vanya. Of course, for thank you. For teaching us. And looking forward to seeing you in the next videos. And don't forget that the link to the course is down below in the description. Thank you guys again for watching this video. One of the tips uh, from me when you watch something like this and you have the aha moment, write this aha moment down in your notes, whether it's about pronunciation of a certain word or a certain rule that helps you sound the way you want to sound. And again, please share this video with your friends and thank you so much for watching it. I'll see you very soon in our next classes. Bye-bye.